Jorgazi. Welcome to JSG Podcast. Hello and greetings to all Bian Konera families around the world. Welcome back to the JSG Podcast, a channel brought to you by Juventus Club of Singapore. But before I introduce you our next guest, I would like to shout out to all viewers, subscribers and your comments on this channel. So, Without further ado, let's the show begin. Hello again, welcome to the new episode of JSG Podcast. As you can see for today, a very special new guest will be joining me. But before I pass him the mic, for him to introduce himself or have a story of him, how everything got started with Juventus. Let me shout out to all the subscribers, even though the, the comments on the JSG's podcast. And yes, we appreciate that, but don't forget to keep on uh, look out for every weekend, new episode. But without further delay, Roman, Thank you and welcome to JSG Podcast. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Yes, yes, yes. Like it's it's like uh, you are the how to say mentor of, of the podcast when we saw you from from day one until now. Yeah, you are mm. doing great. So it's like we you are being our how to say uh, influence. In, in, oh, thank you. In, in deciding to have a podcast on our own, it is because like maybe for every others like this is where that we can meet in the in the media to meet all Juventini all across the world. Uh, even how what what language they speak, where where do they live? We we some sort of like as as a family that we we can discuss things and opinions. So. The mic is all yours, Roman. As a tradition, uh, introduce yourself and how everything got started with Juventus. Uh, well, hello, guys. My name is uh, Roman, and uh, I run the channel called Juve Therapy on uh, YouTube. Um, well, I do all kind of stuff, absolutely everything. So just just subscribe there, and uh, we'll see you. But uh, first and foremost, I gotta say that um, way back in the day when it started. Uh, with Juve, it was, well, it must have been uh, almost uh, 15, uh, 20, 25, 25 years ago, probably, uh, when uh, when the GG, uh, Roberto Baggio, sorry, Roberto Baggio was playing for, uh, for Juve. And uh, I kind of watched the game between Juve and Milan, and I saw Roberto Baggio playing, and I thought, well, that guy looked interesting because they had his ponytail. It was very, very... Yeah sophisticated at the time <laughs> and uh, and also i liked the player because he was a very good player yes true. uh by trait uh so i started following him and then i fell in love with juve um uh, just because of him and because of the black and white shirts they were much more beautiful than black and red <laughs> because i was watching only one game there was you against milan Even yeah. the world is, uh, black and blue oh oof. no 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 let's not talk about that <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and then and then I saw the um, Italy in the World Cup in '94, and where uh, Roberto Baggio unfortunately missed that penalty shot, and that's what I really started to feel um, affici- affiliated with Juve and Roberto Baggio. So he was the guy for me. He was the link to Juve, and then it just basically grew and grew. And after Calciopoli, uh, it even grew bigger. Uh, some certain fans would say it's. This was the time where I just stopped following Juve because of because of the Calciopoli. But for me, it was 
the other way around, especially because we had guys like Gigi Buffon, yeah. Pavel Nedved, Camoranesi, and uh, amongst others, they stayed with the club. Of course, Alex Del Piero, they stayed with the club. And I thought, if they stay, why should I leave? And wow. that was like, that, for me, that was even more confirmation of me staying with Juve. Uh, no question about it. And of course, um, for the rest, uh, for the rest of well, up to, until now, there has been no question, no question. Juve only, per sempre. So, any anybody introduce you to Juventus at that time? Um, to be honest, I don't remember. Uh, I I was a little kid back then, but I, as I said, the first game I watched was Juve against Milan in Ukraine. I was living in Ukraine at that time, so I was watching. Uh, some football on the black white screen. Oh, okay. Uh, and then I was like, oh, this is Juve Milan, apparently a big game. And uh, Juve had this black and white jerseys on black yeah. and white screen. Yeah. Yeah. So it was it was beautiful. So that's where it started. But 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 on that day, in in what as you say you was in Ukraine, is there any Juventus lot of Juventus fans in Ukraine on that time? I have no idea. Uh, I just I, I just remember that uh, the Ukrainian television uh, was able to show the Italian games for some reason. I don't know. And I was just uh, watching through television, uh, switching between channels. And then I thought, well, football. I like football. I was seven years. <laughs> so uh, and I stopped watching and I, I never seen black and white jerseys before. Yeah. So that was the first one for me. Uh, so yeah, but I pretty much grew up uh, following Juve by myself um, oh, in Russia, in Ukraine, and in Norway we have a community for uh, for Norwegian uh, Juve fans. But uh, yeah, I'm not that part, that much part of them. I know of them, yeah. um, but of course we know the global influence Juve yeah. has. We Singapore, yeah. uh, we have guys even in China, in yeah. US, Canada. It's a lot, a lot of uh, fans all over the world. Yeah, but okay, okay. For now, for the viewers, maybe ask why, 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 why Juventus? Why not? Uh, <laughs> um, not Merda, not any other club in Serie A, or maybe the Premier League club. What? What? No, what? no, no. It's no Juventus. No. It's only Juve pleasure. for me. It's, it's. Uh, it was Roberto Baggio. It was Roberto Baggio who started it all for me, and he was he was the guy to uh, to follow. And at that time, also when Juve won their last Champions League in '96, yeah. uh, this was also confirmation that uh, Juve were a big club, and it was let's say comfortable to follow uh, because they were winning. They were a big club back then, and for a kid that is seven, eight years old. That's uh, that's very easy. Uh, who wants to follow a club in the bottom league uh, when you are seven years old? It's difficult. So of course it's natural for me to follow a huge, huge club like Juve, and uh, and I love the shirts. Uh, that's that's what it is basically. And uh, never ever have I thought of uh, following other Italian side. Never. I, I I like how Atalanta are playing, for example. I like how Sassuolo are playing, but. For me, Juve is Juve is Juve. This is something else. But is there any difference if you can see the football play in Italy and in any part of the world? What what makes Italy so special? Uh, in uh, present day, from day one, when 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 you uh, you watch uh, Italian football till now. Well, I don't know. It's something about the passion as well. I love Italy as a whole. Uh, there is a passion. There is something with the body language, how they talk, how they yeah, use their yeah, hands, yeah. everything. Yeah, uh, uh, everything like this uh, is very... Well, It's in, it influences you in some way. So you got to grow up with this and you want more of that because Italians are... Uh, they tend to be very physical with their language body yeah, language yeah. is very visible so yeah. uh, it i find it very funny i find it very um interesting how it is and and of course in, in style of play 
they were more uh, focused on the defending side. Yeah, they were more focused on, unfortunately, uh, diving, uh, cheating sometimes. You know, we, there was a lot of stuff back in the day. Uh, but for me, it was more of a passion yeah. and focus on the game. And the tactics, Marcello Lippi was the guy uh, with the tactics, with the setups, how to win a championship, how to win Champions Leagues. He was great at that time. And I was so much focus on Premier League all over the world. I kind of thought that, you know what? I don't want to become one of those guys. I want to be, uh, I want to really build up the Juve uh, focus for myself because I, I can get used for Premier League anywhere. It's very easy. Um, but for Juve, back in the day, that you'd need to, you needed to work a little bit on that. Uh, so yeah, so this is why uh, this is why it became an obsession, basically. Okay, before we, we dive in to 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 the to the match against against Milan. or maybe I myself will ask what makes you decide to to have juve therapy in you what 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 the what's the most uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's a good question uh, I started this three years ago uh, with well soon actually four uh, <laughs> with the sole purpose of just uh, venting my frustration uh, just f- following uh, just putting it out there because this was the first my very first video that was against Napoli in the Supercoppa which uh, oh, I think it was Lazio maybe I don't remember one of those two uh, and we lost that game oh. uh, and I remember I was so mad uh, I needed to just record it uh, and just put it out there and it actually helped for me personally to just like uh, I use half hour to rant, to be disappointed, to be mad at Juve, and then I'm done. 20, 25 minutes with, uh, with disappointment for, yeah. towards Juve, and then I'm done. That is why I called it Juve therapy, because it was such a oh, therapy yeah. for me, uh, basically, to, to put it out there, and that's it, done. And then I started uh, doing more of that stuff, and I find out that I was basically the only one uh, on YouTube who was doing that, so I... I basically started doing it on every week, weekly basis. And uh, yo, here we are. So, hey okay, guys, don't forget to, to look out for Juve Therapy in the social media. You have him in uh, Twitter, do you have him in Instagram? Do you have yes. Juve Therapy in Facebook? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. So, Facebook, um, Instagram, and of course, uh, Twitter. Oh. You can see all this great episode, his uh, interaction with uh, with other Juventini, this and that. So don't forget to to subscribe to to his channel. Okay. So now let's go to the match. Yes, the very important match against Milan. Are you surprised to see uh. or to to witness how we play against Milan? You know what? Uh, yes and no. Uh, because uh, I feel that before we got these two very unnecessary COVID cases with yeah. Alexandro and Juan Cuadrado, I was thinking this is going to be tough. But I already then, back then, knew that Milan were missing Zlatan uh, and Tonali will be suspended. Uh, so they had a lot of players out and will not be playing against us. So I thought you know what, we can actually do something about, uh, about that with, uh, with Milan. And I always knew that when push comes to shove with, Mil- uh, with Juve, we always rise up yes, and we true. always show our true strengths. And when we found out that Alexandro and Juan Cuadrado were out, uh, I thought, uh, how are we, we going to do this? And then at that same moment, maybe one minute later, I remembered the game against Bayern Munich in Champions League, where we had a lot of players out, uh, a lot. And we almost uh, 
uh, qualified has it been for Patrice Evra <laughs> not yeah. clearing the ball? <laughs> we remember that. <clears throat> and uh, and then I remembered we can actually do a job against very good sides, even though we are somewhat amputated. Uh, so I was just, I was not surprised in terms of uh, the character, okay. but I was very surprised with who scored and how we scored the goals. Uh, because I expected Cristiano Ronaldo to be on fire. Yeah. Uh, but he was, he was very quiet that evening. But Federico Chiesa is kind of... Yeah. 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 On, the, on that game, he, he, he does a fabulous job of mm. scoring the goal. Even maybe he can he, he would score a hat trick if, if he wants to in that game. He hit the post in the first half also. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. He, he could have very well been the hat trick. But the guy is something special for me. He is very fearless. He is direct. He goes at goal straight away. And he does not... That's part of his uh, negativity also because he's so offensive. He forgets to be defensive sometimes. Uh, but when, we, when the result from his offensive play is goals and assists... I mean, I'm okay. I'm happy with that. <laughs> but would if if you are a coach, would you play him in every match? Because because we need to see maybe he, we need to see his his true colors, his his, his true skills of performance. He should be played every match to build up his confidence. Maybe. His uh, it's very hard not to play Kiesa right now. Yeah. You have to play Chiesa, especially now it's very easy to play Chiesa because Cuadrado is out. But as soon as Juan Cuadrado is back, this is a good problem for Pirlo uh, to decide which of those two you should play. And of course, we will probably get back to the formation, the preferred formation and all that. But uh, I feel that Chiesa has to play. But, but are, you, are you shocked to see the result of... Uh... He could score three once against Milan on that day? Uh, no, not really. And uh, not in the way we played. Uh, yeah. We, of course, Milan, I knew that Milan had nothing to come, uh, to come with from the bench. So what we probably should have done is actually going for them after the first goal. We should not just sit back and yeah. give them the ball. We should just go for the second one. And what surprised me is the, uh, the defensive organization when we, when we were pinned back. Of course, the lift was monumental. Bonucci was actually not that bad. And we have to talk also about Danilo, who has been exceptional this season so far. Uh, of course, we can also talk about the referee and his yeah. silly, silly, silly mistake yes. uh, with uh, Rabiot. Yeah. But he was bad overall. He was also bad for Milan because he should have uh, sent off Bentancur, in my opinion. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but in overall, I think that to score three goals at San Siro uh, and with, <laughs> with Chiesa 2 and West McKenney 1, this was surprising. That we scored three goals is not surprising in itself because oh. we, we can score goals. We know that we can score goals. The question is, can we stop conceding? <laughs> oh, yeah. True. Yeah, that's we always concede. And and it's so nerve-wracking because at 1-1, anything can happen. 1-0, at least, yeah. we have something to work on. But, but, but if you can see in the social media, we all can say, are we ready not to play Ronaldo in one of the match? Maybe the youngsters could, could, could do the job for him. Are we ready to well, do that? This is, this is the question uh, also in regards to what can we do without Cristiano. And to be fair to, uh, to this is that we can play, uh, we can score goals without Cristiano. Uh, we, can, we can create and we can actually win games without Cristiano being involved in that play. But I think that the fact that, that he is on the pitch Yes. Uh, makes it a bit easier for us because he will he will always attract attention yeah he will, he will always have two or three players on him and that will make space for Dybala, Chiesa, even Morata when he will be ready 
so it's a good thing to have Cristiano, even though he's not involved in the play. But if Cristiano is on the bench or maybe even not playing, I mean, it's it's about mentality as well, because I feel that without Cristiano, we, we are not that um, urgent. We are not that focused. Cristiano, I think, demands focus, not only on the pitch, but also in locker room. Uh, when they go through halftime, when they go to pre-match, um, well, pre-match build-up in the locker room, I think I think that Cristiano is very vocal person. So we need the we need him in the team for sure. Uh, question is, of course, if Cristiano isn't there, who is stepping up? And this is why we need a, an extra striker. What right now we're looking for extra striker, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and we can't find one. Now it's like we are yeah. going to sign everybody. Welcome. Yeah. Yes. So I'm just I'm just waiting for a name. I'm just waiting for this guy to take a J Medical, and that's it. Uh, and then we can see what we have to work with. Uh, but right now we desperately need somebody else to score goals because unfortunately, as we saw against Milan, uh, we had Chiesa who is a right winger and McKenny who is a midfielder who scored. Dybala, uh, I don't remember him having a shot even uh, against uh, Donnarumma. And uh, I mean, Dybala is a bit deeper player than Morata, for example. Yes. So uh, this is why I say that I said this during my preview for the Sassuolo game that Cristiano will be the guy who will have the most chances to score. Uh, because it's natural, because Dybala is deep and Chiesa is all the way on the right side. Uh, yeah, but well, this is why we need Morata back. <laughs> we need but, uh, Morata back. But do you think uh, now Dybala already built his confidence of playing how he played against Milan? But, but before that, he is not really, really, it's, it's Dybala. But against Milan, we, we see something different of Dybala on the time. Is it going to continue or? How? What's your take on that? We, we will see. We will see. Uh, I think that uh, Dybala is getting back to form, getting back to shape. Uh, I'm surprised that it takes so long for him to get back to shape. I was expecting him to be more active and more in form a bit earlier. Uh, but he has been struggling with injuries. Remember also he had COVID. Yeah. Uh, and as as far as I know, I'm I'm not confirming it, but as far as I know, uh, if you have COVID and after you are uh, healthy again, you have these side effects, which uh, which can be yeah. fatigue, uh, struggling with focus. Uh, this can last even up until one, uh, well, six months. Uh, I'm not sure if that is true, but it makes sense if this is what Dybala is struggling with right now, the side effects from his COVID uh, sickness. And I think actually he was quite seriously ill also. Oh. Uh, so uh, I'm happy for him to play. I'm happy for him to be uh, back in the team. I'm happy to see what he does, what he did against Milan. Yeah. Important thing, of course, uh, Iskandar, is consistency. Yes. Sure. Uh, he did play against Milan, fine. But he needs also to deliver the same against Sassuolo. Uh, I would love for him to score tonight. Uh, I'd love for him to, to do an assist, uh, to basically show his uh, worth and show his skills uh, because, well, we need him. <laughs> we need him right now. Okay. If, if, you, if you have been given a chance, if you are, if you are the, the, the chief of scout or the one who, who handle in signing, who would you <laughs> sign? As a striker? Yes. Wow. That's different. That's difficult. That's very, very difficult. Uh, we have no money, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, so we need to loan somebody. Uh, we need to be uh, um, sustainable about this purchase or loan. Uh, I don't know. I, I, want, I don't want to say any names, but I would, I, what I want is a player who can go right into the team and deliver from day one. Because if we sign somebody in January, yeah. it's not because... It's not because we need him in May or June. That's because we need him. 
February, March, April. So the guy needs to be ready. Uh, and if we buy, for example, Arkadiusz Milik from Milan, let's yeah. say that happens, I don't think because it's too expensive. I, I and I hate dealing with uh, De Laurentiis, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the president of uh, Napoli. But uh, if he comes, remember he hasn't played for a year or so, so he will not be fit to play maybe until the middle of February. Uh, and then we lose this one month of yeah. window with a guy who can actually contribute. Um, I like the idea of uh, Pavoletti uh, from uh, Cagliari uh, because he ha- he is healthy now. He has been struggling with injuries, uh, and he is when he is in form, he is uh, he can actually produce something. Um, well, Llorente has been mentioned. Quagliarella has been mentioned. Yes, uh, Graziano Pelle from um, well from back in the day. He was in Southampton. He played for Lecce. But he is, I don't know how fit he is. Uh, he's been released from his contract in China. Uh, yeah, there are many, many names. I, maybe if, if, I want, if you want me to give you a name, I'd say Giroud. I'd say Olivier Giroud. But don't you think that uh, we need to have more Italian players on the club now to build? Because we have lesser and lesser Italian players in Juventus. Because it's now it's important that we have international players. It's not a tradition like the old days. We have only Italian players who dominance the, the the club, but but mm. but we can't see right now. Or it, it's it's the best that we bring in more Italian players on Juventus. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. That's a very good point. We uh, we are known for having Italian players uh, in Juve, but uh, unfortunately, be- in those 10 years yeah. uh, while well, Juve has been dominated, Italian players hasn't been that great. Uh, they have been mediocre. So I, last year or even the year before, I struggled to find any Italian player who would go into this Juve side and actually make them better. So if we're looking at quality of Juve, uh, no Italian player would rise, uh, well, will raise that quality. Today, we see that Federico Chiesa was a good buy, was a very good purchase. He is Italian. Yeah. Uh, we can also say that well, we have these guards like uh, Chiellini, Bonucci, but they've always been there. <laughs> yeah. uh, Gigi Buffon. Uh, but, um, I mean, Gigi Donnarumma looks like an exciting one. I don't think that he will come to Juve. Yes. Um, I... But maybe. Uh, I highly doubt that he will be there. But... Uh, we have a good generation of players coming in, but still, I don't see one player, that Italian player, that will, can come into this uh, Juve side and make them better. Uh, the starting eleven, that is. I, I, I struggle finding one. You have Verratti. I'm not sure that he will do a job. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's tough. It's tough. Maybe Gigi Donnarumma, if you can compare him to Wojciech Szczesny. Maybe. But uh, apart from that, no. Talking about Sesni, or also yeah. called him Tech in, in, in yeah. Keeper. Yeah. What a wonderful performance. He saved a lot of save that he did against Milan. So like he is yeah, yeah, we will say he's underrated. But he really did well. He did really well of stopping lots of uh, shoot, draws, this and that. So would, would, would you consider him the, the, the man on the bench on that day? Mm, for me, it's Federico Chiesa. Uh, but I would also put uh, Wojciech Czesny right behind him. Uh, this was a very important game for Tech uh, yes. because he was struggling uh, with some silly conceded goals. Like against Udinese, this was a very bad goal to concede for him. Uh, he, uh, he also needs the confidence of the defense because i think uh, Gigi buffon is a vocal leader yes he right. can uh, he can control his defense much better than Wojciech Szczesny can but surprising so, but sorry surprising on that day you can hear Szczesny did shout yes and this is what i want this is what i want from Wojciech yeah. because he is uh, this is what his weak points are he cannot control his uh, uh, his box that well and he is also not that vocal so 
I want more of that. And I think that uh, Buffon helps him with that off the pitch. He needs to. Uh, because we need Wojciech Szczesny on his best. Because because Wojciech is one of the best goalkeepers on the line and one versus one. When he's in form, he is exceptional. As you said perfectly well, uh, he, sa- he saved a lot of shots. Uh, he's good. Yeah. He's good at that. And he rarely makes a mistake of that uh, proportion. Uh, when he saves a shot, he clears it very well to the side, not back into the box. Uh, he he's good at that, but his weaknesses are communication. And uh, it was great against uh, Milan. Let's see if he plays tonight. And if he does, um, well, we'll see. But do you prefer Buffon to play tonight or Cesny? Yes, I prefer Buffon to play tonight. Uh, because unfortunately, we we have no delict in, uh, in the defense. So uh, we miss another vital puzzle yeah. for our defense so we need communication back there and as much as i hate to say it but i prefer buffon uh, to start because wojciech played such a good game against milan and yeah. Yeah. it's always bad to bench a player that played a good game last time um, but it is what it is i feel that buffon will control the defense better it also depends who will play in defense uh Kilini, Demiral, Bonucci, Danilo. It's one of those four in the center of the defense. So we'll see, we'll see. But I prefer, yes, I prefer Gigi. But uh, will you, maybe, maybe you would prefer Gigi in the next games against Swazolo? Or means after the game against Swazolo, we will be playing against Merda, of course. Would you put uh, Cesny? Or Buffon on the game? Against Merda, that must be... Uh, well, I'd say I'd say it has to be uh, Wojciech. Uh, this is a top game and he is our first goalkeeper, so it has to be. But we have this game between uh, against Genoa as well in Coppa Italia. Yeah. Uh, where, well, I'd, I'd love to see Pinsolio, <laughs> to yeah, be honest. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Yes. Yeah. I, but uh, yeah, it's probably between uh, Buffon or Chesney for that game as well. But but but, but will, will you retain the formation or, or or the players against Milan for the game against Osolo or there's some, a bit of rotation? What might would be better? Um, according to Paratici or Pirlo, I'm not so sure. Uh, Arthur and West McKenney will start. So both of them started on the bench against Milan. Uh, so there will be rotation there. And in defense also, of course, we have to rotate because we have uh, De Ligt out and uh, Cuadrado, Alexandro as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So for me, this would be, um, there will be natural, for, uh, natural uh, rotation, basically. But what, what, will you sacrifice Danilo to play against Sol Solo because next match is, is, is the, the big, big match against Merda. Will, will you not feel that Danilo on again against Sol Solo? Will you? Um, so Dano, Danilo has one yeah, yellow, one yellow yeah. fr- from suspension. Yes. So if he gets yellow against Sol Solo, he will be out of the Merda game. So I would say... Uh, my predicted uh, from, from lineup was uh, Buffon, Chiellini, Bonucci, and Demiral, actually. All those, both of them are starting. Yeah. And I'd like to rest Danilo, not only because he has a yellow, but also he has played a lot of games. Yes. A lot of games. And it's far more dangerous for us to lose the Danilo for yeah. injury than suspension. Uh, so I'd rather rest him for that basis also. And, um, and then we have Chiesa on the right. Uh, Weston McKenney, uh, Arthur, and probably Ramsey in the center yeah. of the midfield. And I'd like to see Bernardeschi uh, against Asuolo on the left side. But but I'm sorry, I, I already how would we say have forgotten his name or the number 33. I already have forgotten because we never <laughs> see him play for a long, long time. Yes, he, yes, he has been. He has been out of uh, out of a game, out of uh, our team for quite some time, and he has been featuring only last ten minutes or fifteen yeah. minutes. 
but I feel that he can contribute offensively uh, to our play. Uh, Frabotta is a promising young kid yes. on the left side, but for me, I'll go with Bernadeschi against Sassuolo on the left side, and we will see. But against Merda, it's a completely different story how we feel. Weather also depends on if Cuadrado is back and Alexandro is back. This is also a vital, vital thing to consider. Okay, when you go through the, the, the social media, you can understand what Pirlo is saying. Like, uh, the big three against Milan is only important if we also win against Sassuolo. Otherwise, it will be useless if we, not, if we win against Milan and if we not win against Sassuolo. Are you agree to that? Yeah, completely. Uh, I need consistency. This, yeah. is what, uh, this is what we've been saying. Uh, it, it doesn't help. Uh, I mean, for the confidence, of course, it's great to, build, uh, to beat uh, a good side. But every side are good side in January. Uh, Sassuolo is a good side. Uh, Merda is a very good side. Uh, Milan is a very good side. Napoli uh, yeah. will be coming after. Uh, also a very good side. So we need, we need those games and we need those three points. But we have also ourselves to blame <laughs> because we have... Uh, we have a draw against Crotone. We have a draw against um, yes, 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 yes. Verona at home. We have uh, a, stupid, a stupid loss against Fiorentina. Yeah. So we have those silly games that we must, we must, we have to win. Uh, but we don't. So this is why this January, January fixture list is so important for us because we have, we have screwed it up already in uh, yes, 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 last year. Yes, it's true. So, what, what would be the best formation against uh, Sosolo? Will you go again with the 4-4-2, 4-3-3 or 3-5-2 against Sosolo? Well, it's rarely 4-4-2. I don't know. People say that we play 4-4-2, but we do not play 4-4-2. We play 4-4-2 only uh, in some, some, um, some special moments of the game. Like against Milan, as soon as... Arthur and McKenney came on, then we saw clearly it's 4-4-2. But that was more of a st stability kind of formation. If we start right at the start of the game, yeah. this is a 3-4-1-2 or maybe even 3-5-2. Because we have Chiellini. Uh, let's say we start Chiellini, Bonucci and Demiral at the back. So those three will be playing in defense. And then when we have the ball... Frabotta or Bernadeschi and Chiesa will be very wide, yeah. very wide. So it's it's a three-five-two basically, in my opinion, or four-one-two. Um, and I would I would use the same because Pirlo has been playing with the same formation for for the whole season. And the fact that Delict is out, I don't know. It doesn't. I I don't think this. I don't think it matters to be honest uh, because we have enough players to. Um, to replace the Ligt. The question yeah. is, are they fit enough? Because we have four guys. We have Danilo, Bonucci, Chiellini and Demiral. But are they fit enough to play the whole 90 minutes? That is the question. But will, will we give a chance to the, to the youth players to take over? That area? Maybe, maybe will you comfortable like if Dili is out, or Chiellini is out, will you put Dragus in on that matter? But we haven't seen him play because because to, to see someone play well, you need to expose. He needs to play regularly, or maybe yet today he won't play. The next game he won't play to build his confidence. But 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 now it, it, it's it's hard. Yes, yes, it is uh, for him. We hope we have only seen him for ten or fifteen minutes or something. So it's very very few minutes we've seen him play. And uh, he looks okay. It's nothing special for me now. But of course, when he's young and he will be extending his contract with Juventus, uh, that means that the well, club believes in him. But I think that if we start, if we struggle with defenders, uh, he has to play against us all. If both, if we later today uh, get news that Demiral and Kilini are out with injury. <laughs> Uh, if we have if we have those news, Draguzin has to play. Uh, but there is also this Genoa game coming up for Coppa Italia yeah. in the midweek. I think honestly, I think Draguzin will play in that game. He has to. Bonucci needs a rest. Yes, yeah, true. But, but, but 
is there any missing links in the squad right now? What 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 you can see? If if, if there is so, who is the best player that can fill up that position? That missing link. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the missing link would be not a player, but uh, consistency. I think uh, we have. We have players to we have basically we have players to win the league. Yeah. The thing that the thing that we la- lack is uh, the understanding of the formation and the uh, consistency with the results and no personal errors in terms of mistakes at the back and also that we get yellow cards, red cards, discipline. Mentality. Uh, I was thinking mentality exactly, uh, but I was thinking um, attacking midfielder maybe the position that we would like to strengthen. But I kind of like Aaron Ramsey. I have to say that I like Aaron Ramsey, but we cannot trust him because he's so injury prone. But uh, that's uh, maybe, the bad... maybe it's because that his, uh, Pirlo put his in a different position that he used to play. Maybe. maybe. Because, because he's an attacking midfielder. He can, he can run. All, but, but if you put him on on the on the, on the wing on the right or on the left he will go in to the center but he's gonna left that that area empty so that, that's that's the maybe his mentality has he's played on that maybe. position too well yeah so. uh Aaron Ramsey plays a very versatile and dynamic role uh, he starts off on the left side uh, of the midfield and then he gra- gradually develops into a more central player um we also have to remember we have Guy Kulusevski. Yeah. He hasn't been very good so far. I, I think he has been average at best. Uh, I have still yet to see him shine for us consistently. He had some good moments, but he had also very bad moments. Uh, so if he also comes into play, he could become that attacking midfielder we are looking for. So I think, as I said, I think we have the squad... Uh, to win the league may be apart from a striker. So if we get a striker, a good, proper uh, striker who can score goals, uh, this is also a dream for every FIFA or football manager uh, yeah. <laughs> players. If you get a good striker, you win everything. Yeah. But right now, we actually, it's true for Juve uh, because we need, we need another striker to complement Morata and uh, Cristiano. If we get one, we have good chances uh, to challenge for Scudetto. Right now, we are far behind. We are seven points behind Milan and uh, we need to catch them. The road to to the number 10. Is it uh, now? Now are we, are, we are back on track. As we can say, we are back on track. You, can, you have that uh, optimistic... Uh, can you can you ask me can you ask me that same question in one month <laughs> because January when we have January when we are done with all these big games then we will see where we are oh after the game against Merda we will see yes yes Napoli also uh, it's we have big games big games and uh, then we'll see if we are seven or five points behind uh, it's possible it's very very possible uh, it's possible anyway. Uh, but it becomes much easier if we do a good job in January. Okay, next the game against against Sao Solo. As you can see, yeah, yeah, we are, we are already missing a lot of our first eleven players. Like, like Dilip is out. That would you rest Ronaldo and rest him and make him ready <coughs> for for Merda? Would would you do that? <clears throat> yeah, that's a good question. No, <laughs> because we don't have anybody. Um, but but as, you have anybody. As, as you said that yes, <clears throat> we need him on the pitch because he's he's the inspiration for, for for others to play well. Because with him, everybody wants to play well. <clears throat> but but the problem is now every Serie A club. Who played against Juventus is is giving like hundred and one percent. They can play better against Juventus, but they sucks against other clubs, as, as you can see, mm. like Tony, Spezia. 
it's like when you're a bit Juventus, it's like they 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 win the scudetto, you know. <laughs> the the yeah. different feeling. How come you sucks against other 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 team, but you all played well against Juventus? What is mm. happening? It's, it's maybe their mentality is that oh I played well against Juventus. Who knows? I will be. They they will sign me. Yeah, yeah, uh, maybe. What what's your take on that? Uh, maybe this is more of uh, our own fault. Uh, it's always like this uh, because when we play against bad sides, uh, what if if you are a very bad side, with all due respect to Cotone and whatever, uh, how can you win against Juventus? Well, you sit back, yeah, and you are defensive and you yeah. close down, and then you counterattack when you have the chance. So this is what they are doing. And of course, for us, it's uh, also uh, very typical uh, of like kind of we switch off a little bit, I guess, smaller ah, size because we know we control the ball. Yeah, complacency. Yes. Complacency, yes. And uh, uh, we just take it for granted that we win. I hope this is not the case, but if it is, this is a big issue for Pirlo side. Um, they can almost expect to win before. Uh, before they actually played the game. They said so themselves against Fiorentina. Pirlo said that we were already on the Christmas break. Yes. And that's such a bad thing. <laughs> uh, this, is, this, is, this is against Fiorentina. I don't care if they are uh, playing bad this season or they have a bad side. Uh, but this is Fiorentina. This is our rival. At least they think it is. Yeah. Um, so it's always tough. Every single game in Serie A is hard. Uh, in different ways. So against Cotone, it's difficult because they will sit back and then they will counterattack us. And when people, well, when teams are counterattacking us, yeah. they uh, they co- always uh, catch us in in balance. So we are not balanced in the defense. So this is why usually we tend to concede against smaller sides because we are not focused enough. So it's not because they are so great. Uh, just because we are very bad. Example being also, uh, if you watched Napoli against Spezia, yeah. Spezia won. Yeah. Who won? Uh, so this is also a case for bigger size, Milan, uh, Inter, Merda, uh, Napoli. Uh, you know, this these sides can also drop points, but it's so typical. I, I know what you're saying, and it's, I completely agree. I remember back in the day, we had also always goalkeeper who was excellent against yeah, us. Yeah. One game a season. <laughs> uh, I remember Sorrentino for Kievo Verona. He was playing in the goal, always excellent against Juventus. And then he was bad uh, other 37 games. But the one game against Juventus, absolutely world's best goalkeeper. So it's so typical. I hope this is not the case today. Yeah, I, th- I think maybe we already seen like, it's it's already clear cut. They wants to stop Juventus of winning the <laughs> yes. Juventus number ten. Or not not only the the club, the pitch. We all can see from the from the from the from the referee itself. What? But this is. But but we we still say we will fight and we will fight till the end. It's it's like the, the game against uh, against Milan. What 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 the the club Napoli did. Like you, your your players have COVID, but you won't come. But it is not that. That's what the difference between them and us. We fight all the way till the end. We will show them on the pitch that who we are. So that that is just, that. If people or viewers want to see what was the difference between Juve and other Serie club, this is what we show it to them that mm. we won't take up. We won't say that ah, we won't, we won't go. Because, because of this problem. But we will go and show everyone. It's, it's not. Because we are, we are a team. We, uh, we have this something called Lo Stile Juve. Uh, yes. uh, back in the day, this was, this was very, very um, visible. If you play for Juve, you have this Lo Stile Juve. Right now, it, it's kind of being watered out with something else. It's not that visible anymore because yeah. money drives the world even more now. Uh, but we are still there. I think that the fact that we show up at the Milan, uh, the fact that we 
don't even care appealing against that decision for uh, from uh, Napoli. We say that we play. We play and uh, let's see. Uh, and they always say that they prefer to win on the pitch. You will say that they prefer to win on the pitch always. Yeah. This is why they have uh, under the crest, they have uh, 30 Sul Campo yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sul Campo. on the pitch. Yeah. So this is, this is why it's so different from other clubs. Um, we, well, we, have, we are probably the only club that has been in this position. To, uh, to be judged so unfairly for uh, Calciopoli, uh, to be judged so strangely this season with uh, Napoli. And, uh, well, the refereeing decision has not been in favour for us this season. But the club, it's, uh, we fans, we can scream and shout at the camera or at the, at the TV screen and say, oh, this is a bad decision. But at the end of the day, when the game is done, uh, very rarely, I, ha- I cannot remember one case that Juve has been uh, appealing against something big. Uh, Juve has always said that we win and lose on the pitch. That's it. So it's it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a, sad that it's become that the way that you can question every decision in Italy with uh, from Napoli. Uh, they have they they got no one time. They got no two times. Yeah. For the third time, they didn't give up, and they still. And then finally, they got their uh, their wish, and now they will play. But uh, yeah, I don't agree with that decision, of course. But it is what it is. We play, and we'll see what happens. The, the, do you wish that, uh, that, that the fans or so-called the diehard fans will do the same as what Milan did when when they beat Lazio? The fans will be go out on the street and win the flag and celebrate it. It will be nice if if, if Juventus fans will do that. So it, it seems that that. The, the thing is, what other club does, there's, there's, there's no problem. But maybe if the vetters have to do that, the authority will come and bang hard on, on, on the club. That is, that is mm. where we miss we miss all that atmosphere, the player, the supporters, the flag in the stadium, DJ, without supporters. Like, it, it, it's, it's no different between you play away or play home. So, so now, when, when we, we play away, we should really, how to say, take all the opportunity because there's no fans. Because when we are playing with supporters, it is totally different because they, they, they motivate the players to play well. So like, like, like you say, we, we did miss to take chances when we play a low side that we can bring home a valuable three points this and that, but, but we missed that. But, but now, we, we can't afford to do that anymore. We can't afford to slip points, this and that. Because yeah. a lot of club is now aiming high to beat Juventus or maybe to ruin the, the celebration of the 10th Scudetto that, that, that we want to. But as you can see now, does our play we did differently in, in, in Serie A than we play in the Champions League? It's, 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 it's different, you see. So what's, what's your take on that? Uh, in Champions League, you have to uh, get points straight away. Uh, in Serie A, I like to compare Serie A and Champions League like sprint and marathon. Okay. Uh, Serie A is more of a marathon, but Champions League is a sprint. Uh, if you if you have one mistake in Champions League, it can cost you. It can cost you the qualification. It, it one slip up. And yeah. you are out of the of the game. If uh, if you are conceding one goal um, at home, this might be enough for you to be eliminated if you don't score in the next leg. So Champions League is so much more visible if you make a mistake. If you make a mistake, you can see it in Champions League much more, uh, and the consequences of that mistake in Serie A. If you if you lose one game, you can. And you win three next three games, you'll be okay. It's 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 okay. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. So I think this why this is also the fact why we are playing so differently in Serie A and to Champions League because I think the tactics is not that important. It's not that vital in Champions League as it is in in the league in the league table. Uh, in Champions League, you have to win. You have to score goals. 
almost. If you don't score, you will be eliminated. Of course, if you defend well, yeah. uh, of course you can be quali qualified. But at the end of the day, when it goes all the way to the final, you have to win the games. The exception may be uh, the Greece. Greece in uh, 2004, I think, Euros 2004, 2000. Uh, they won uh, the Euros uh, championship just by defending. Uh, but that's what that's like the only example I can think yeah, of. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise, those kind of big championships, you have to go, you have to score goals, and you have to win games. Uh, yeah. So this is uh, this is why it's different. And maybe some say that we have a chance to win the Champions League this season uh, because how the way we play. Yes. Uh, we will see. <laughs> we will see. <laughs> I I I would I said this at the very beginning, even before we uh, draw drew the group stage. I said quarterfinal, I'll be happy uh, because I... if, if by the looks of things, uh, with the COVID, with new manager, with uh, new squad. Dybala being out of yeah. form, new squad, yes, it takes it takes time. So I will not expect too much from Andrea Pirlo this season in Champions League, but quarterfinal has to be at least a minimum. Uh, and now we have a favorable, maybe favorable yeah, draw against yeah, uh, Porto. Yeah. So we will see uh, what happens. But main thing is very, very important. Do not underestimate. Yes, yes. Teams and, and, in and, Champions League. Yes, yes. Again, when complacency start, everything is it's ruined. Maybe we we, are, we we can't see what what the great plan that Pirlo does. Sometimes it, it doesn't work. As a fans, yes, we we have a bit frustration on that but sometimes it works yeah 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 people people will say yeah uh, when the fans you are happy when you lose eh, when you win but you so frustrated when you lose this is this is so yeah. cool. but but, but we, we 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 how to shut out our frustration maybe for that couple of minutes but but we still we still back up the team until the end they, 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 they swear. So so now, now I, I would like to know yeah, your prediction against so solo later tonight. What was what, your prediction? What's what the goal? Who going? Who will be the 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 man of the match hmm. on the field? Um, I uh, I did a preview on my. I did a preview on my channel uh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, I I did the prediction uh, that was yesterday and this morning I kind of I woke up and I thought <laughs> you know what I'm I'm sticking to that prediction so I think we're going to win yes um and yeah. I think we're going to win 3-2 so three goals we're going to score and two goals we're going to concede but we're going to win 3-2 and Man of the match, it's very hard. Uh, it could be anybody, but uh, let's go with uh, let's go with Paulo Dybala. Let's let's just uh, unleash him today. Today, Dybala will score. Breaking news: Dybala will <laughs> score two goals today. Dybala's day for, for Dybala's day today. It's, it has to be, and if it is, yeah, this is very important, very important for us coming into Merda game. Yes, because. Dybala can score goals. Cristiano is Cristiano. Chiesa is dangerous. So we need something from Dybala tonight to show that he is truly something to fear. And I'd love for him to score tonight. So I'd say 3-2. Uh, it's going to be uh, tough. I think maybe even we will be down 1-0 at halftime. And then, <laughs> and then Fino a la Fina style, we're going to win this 3-2. <laughs> but, 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 but you prefer that we we gonna attack from the start, but once we lead comfortably, second half we will change or rotate a lot of players because to rest them for the Merda game will, will that uh, be, be yeah good? maybe maybe Sassuolo is um Sassuolo is a very interesting side to play against because they play football, uh, they do not sit back. Uh, and just clear the ball and uh, focus on tactics. They actually play possession football and create chances going forward with that possession football. 
So this is why I think there will be a lot of goals in this game because Sassuolo will go forward, will create chances, and we are prone to concede yeah. uh, goals. So uh, this will be a very tactical game also. And we'll, and we'll also test Andrea Pirlo. If he has ability to uh, create something different uh, from the events that will happen, uh, maybe uh, we will be better off with just starting a bit cautiously uh, to see what uh, Sassuolo are doing, what what is their game plan, um, and if we end up scoring first, yeah, we'd be better off with just going for the second one also because if we sit back and give them the ball like we always do. We might as well concede straight away because that's what happens anyway. So, will you be watching this? People will say a future Juventus player that will play for Swazolo. We will go to see how will he perform. You, you know who am I talking talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. Manuel Locatelli. Is that yeah, the one? Yes, of course. Mm. So that he is uh, hopefully. He does show what he really true is to to become a Juventus player. Not everyone can become a Juventus player because you have to put your heart, your mind, your passion on it. So hopefully we, we will we can see how he can play. That yes, he's the man for for Juventus. Who knows in the, in the near future? So okay, but but before before we end. Uh, this uh, podcast, uh, I will. Uh, will you have anything to say for the viewers or already known you or new viewers that this is the first time that they already knows who is Juve therapy is? So, please. yes, uh, uh, we have talked about uh, well, the swallow game, uh, how it's gonna go. Hopefully, it's gonna go yeah. with a we win. Uh, so, um, I will be doing a pre match uh, live on my channel. Uh, so if you are watching this one, just join me on that one, of course, uh, before the game and after the game, we'll do the play ratings and the full-time reactions. Hopefully it will be a fun session because yeah. if it's not, if we are losing today, it will not be fun. It will not be fun. Uh, they will be very disappointing, but we will still do this. Um, I'd say, uh, I'd say, well, for me, this is just, not not only like a, a YouTube channel, I create my stuff and all that, but this is also a community, hopefully become a community yeah. for all UEFA fans who can come there and show their frustration and share their passion. Uh, this is this is basically everything that's been said from every U, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, you know, show the passion here and there and uh, come to my show and whatever. But for me, it's more of not only UEFA. For me, it's also during this hard, tough period of time with COVID, and people not be able to travel to uh, Italy to watch Juve. Um, they can share their frustrations. And I know people have lost their jobs. I know people have lost their loved ones because of this pandemic. Uh, and maybe my channel could be some uh, community hub for those people who can connect and share their frustrations and come together under the flag of Juve. We support the same club. Uh, we yeah. support uh, and we we cry together we laugh together so why not do that uh, together online so this was also uh, became kind of a big thing this year uh, instead of just doing creating content for my own sake uh, it's also uh, creating content uh, in order to connect with other Juventini and this is also why Iskandar you were one of the first people on my channel to do the Juventus quiz yeah. to uh, to do the your best 11 so it was it was very great fun and this is what it is uh, we uh, we do this because we love talking to Juve fans uh, all over the world yeah. thanks to covid i have to say because before covid maybe it wouldn't been that possible but now we have time and resources and well most importantly time to get into this technical side with streaming with talking with zoom uh, with uh, Skype, everything. Yeah. So yeah, this is it. So guys, if you are, um, if you want to be part of this community, this small but lovely community of UV therapies, subscribe to my channel and uh, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook or whatever. And uh, yeah, 
we'll see you then on my lives, previews, and the many, many more stuff is coming uh, this year as well. And also Iskandar's channel. Uh, you follow this one, please. Uh, this is, I love, I love the fact that um, Singapore community has uh, this museum that you have back there. <laughs> I, I absolutely love this. So uh, yeah, yeah, it would be, uh, it would be a pleasure to visit you one day. I hope, I hope yeah, we yeah, can travel yeah. in the future and yeah, yeah, watch yeah. this. We, we also hopefully uh, one day, who knows, maybe who knows, we can do it, uh, the podcast live together side by side. Maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe in Turin, maybe, maybe, we, uh, maybe someone will visit you country, maybe you will come visit us. We, we won't say that it won't happen. We, we don't know, but it, it will. Anything uh, is possible. Uh, yeah, yeah, anything is possible. So uh, yeah. again, uh, so to, to, uh, to all Juventinists out there, if you have a problem, in, in, in your life, there's one guy you should go to. to have I'm, a, not, I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a therapist. Yeah. Just, therapy, you know. Yeah. Take it. Take out UV therapy. Maybe, maybe <laughs> from there you can feel much more better when, when you can uh, release your anger when when you join him to to to, to the, his podcast on the live match. Maybe. That that will be the, the 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 medicine for 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 everyone. So from from us uh, in Singapore, we will say thank you uh, for for joining me, and maybe you. You, you have done a, a great job in in in, in your podcast for Juve Therapy. Everyone, uh, we, we we have fun fun watching it, and hopefully we will see lots of uh, Juventini will will be involved in your channel. So. So again, thank you very much uh, to take up uh, to take up your time or spend your time on joining uh, GSG podcast uh, for this episode number fourteen. It is it's it's really great. So 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 thank you again, Roman. Thank you for everything. Thank you for having me. So so guys, before before we end this podcast, what is your prediction, Iskandar? Oh, for tomorrow, for, I, I for tonight. Go for, uh, a clean sheet. If Buffon play, I will go for a clean sheet. 3 0. Wow. 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 <laughs> yes. yes uh, okay. 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 So, so before that, don't forget to, 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 to look out for, for, for the next episode next weekend. If we have a special new guest will be joining me on the channel. But, but who knows in the near future, Rom Roman will be inviting you again with, with, with different atmosphere, with different, maybe, maybe celebration, maybe celebration of the Champions League winning or oh. Jekko, this and that. Oh. So, <laughs> calma, okay. calma. So, so again, don't forget to, to, to subscribe to this channel or, and, and uh, Juve Therapy channel and, and and the last word from us, it's Fino alla fine. Fino alla fine. For the Juve. See you soon, guys. See you next weekend on a new episode. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for, for subscribing. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ragazzi. Ciao. For the Juve. Ciao.